Infamously, I said that the Aeon Pro was better than the Nexus Pro in almost every single possible way. But does that prediction hold true with the Aeon Pro X versus the Nexus Pro X? Well, I've already taken a look at the Nexus Pro X, so if you want to see that video, it's in the top right corner. The Adventure Force Aeon Pro X is a $25 blaster that is exclusive to Walmart here in the US. It advertises 150 foot ranges, which while is absolutely nuts compared to standard Nerf blasters, the Nexus Pro X did advertise a 200 foot range, but it also advertises slam fire in more of a pistol configuration. And it comes with a plastic scar muzzle that will help improve your accuracy. So for some people, this blaster will be more than enough and you wouldn't have to spend double the price to get a Nexus Pro X. Of course, that depends on if it's any good or not. In the box, we got the blaster itself with a 12 round purple magazine, a spare O-ring, a removable front sight, our scar muzzle, 12 AF Pro darts, a adjustable eye pro and that's it the blaster itself does feature a top priming slide as opposed to a pump action slide has a shorter picatinny rail up in the front and picatinny rails on the sides a longer picatinny rail underneath the barrel an end strike compatible stock attachment point on the back of it which is super cool an extremely comfortable grip that is compatible with various other grips usually those for like a airsoft aeg or m4 style right here we've got a paddle mag release which will release our talent mag but we've also got this smaller little one right here which will allow you to easily use either your trigger finger or your middle finger to freely drop your mag speaking of which it only comes with a 112 round mag but this is a really nice magazine it's basically a worker talon magazine no weird notches or designs that would prevent this from working in other blasters it's the same design they are really stout and really nice you've got a safety button right here that will block the trigger from moving and a pretty standard trigger pull just slides back and releases a catch no pivot no nothing now the nexus pro x was incredibly smooth to prime in the original Aeon Pro was a bit difficult to prime, so, huh, I wonder how this one is going to fare. It's stiff, but it is ridiculously smooth. That is so much easier than the Aeon Pro. Oh yeah, if you like the Aeon Pro, you're gonna like the Aeon Pro X a lot. Plastic front sight that is Picatinny compatible. These rails are not Nerf rails. They won't work with Nerf attachments. Ooh, but that front sight really does snap on there nicely. Wow, really securely in fact. And it's got a rear sight that's kind of carved into the slide, which maybe that'll work for aiming better than what we got with the Nexus Pro X. And one of the more important additions is the SCAR muzzle or string centering auto rifling, or in this case, a PCAR, a plastic centering auto rifling. This has little grooves that are in the plastic that catch the foam of the dart and give it a twist as it exits the barrel. This of course spins the dart and thus stabilizes it in flight, increasing your accuracy. This part not only works in the Aeon Pro X and thus of course the Nexus Pro X, just kind of push it in the barrel like so, it will even work with your Aeon Pro and your Nexus Pro, and pretty much most of the Dart Zone in Venture Force catalog. And this flare end right here will fit onto many aftermarket Nerf blaster barrels. Float up our 12 round mag with our 12 Adventure Force Pro Darts, and you don't have to prime the blaster to insert the magazine. So first and foremost, normal prime, and not hitting hard enough to pierce through the sound deadening wall, but it is hitting really hard. Best part, however, is going to be hold down the trigger, prime it back, push it forward, it fires a dart. Oh, you could get really good with that. Man, I love slam fire. And rolling the Aeon Pro X right off your hip and just dumping a mag, that's gonna be really good for crowd control. Well, I'm guessing since it says it shoots over 150 feet, it's gonna shoot about 150 feet per second, but distance is not velocity. So let's take it over to Freddy and chronograph it. And then of course, put it up against our indoor target range. With the PCAR attach, we did hit a higher velocity of 180.3 feet per second, which is massive numbers compared to stock nerf. But we also had consistent shots that went down into like the 130s, which dropped the average over 12 shots to about 152 feet per second, which is definitely not what this blaster should be doing. This problem indicates that the barrel is probably too short for the amount of air it can deliver and essentially we're over gassing the dart. But seeing how I had an extra of the Dart Zone Pro B-Car or bearing centering auto rifling, I decided to slap one of those on since it does vent excess gas through the holes where the bearings are and the shots were a lot more consistent, 
While we still got some deviation, including a high shot of 201 feet per second, this brought the average to 175 feet per second, and that made it a far superior experience to use. All right, first things first, let's see if we can even hit anything using these iron sights. Maybe? Maybe not. You have to aim really, really high. Well, maybe I'm using them wrong. Kind of doubt it, but let's just put an optic on anyway, even though that's really weird with this blaster. All right, time for a target test. Hopefully that'll let us correct our aim and figure out where this thing needs to be held. So closer to the Ready. bullseye, higher the score. Let's see what we're doing. That, that was so far off, it wasn't even funny. So I'm pretty much having to aim top left of the black to hit the center. It's almost like you shouldn't put an optic there. Uh, 66. You know, I could probably aim better not even aiming. Let's see if I'm right. This won't be as consistent, but... Now I know that didn't seem as accurate to lower score, but there were more outliers. I still felt that was way more accurate. I don't think it's the blaster, I think it's me. Let's try one more time using the sights that are built in. I'm using the B car because this is so much better than the P car. That is so bad. How are you, maybe, there's no way to do this. You're like that? I've never felt this defeated trying to aim an aimable blaster before. I need to figure this out. Ready. All right, let's see if this is a little bit better now. Actually, seventy five. I think I can do it. Yeah, it's, it's accurate. It's just, look at this setup. It's very heavy in the front right now. You could make this work and it is an accurate blaster. It's just gonna take a lot of practice, but an 88 is very good. So how is the air seal on this thing? Absolutely perfect. And what's weird about this blaster compared to the Nexus Pro X is that the painted part right here is actually a separate piece, so you could remove those panels if you wanted to. And I hate to say it, but this thing works so much better with the beat car than the included scar barrel. It, it's not even comparable. So how do I feel about the Aeon Pro X? Well, it's definitely a huge upgrade over the original Aeon Pro. The difference this time is that the Aeon Pro X isn't that much comparably better or anything to the Nexus Pro X. This blaster still hits ridiculously hard. It's only about 20, 30 FPS shy on average compared to the Nexus Pro X, and I actually got this thing to hit over 200 once. And the addition of slam fire makes this thing absolutely wonderful to fire off the hip. But that's the thing, firing off the hip is what this blaster is pretty much only good for in this configuration. See, the Aeon Pro design doesn't really lend itself very well to being aimed. You can certainly kind of like hip fire it or kind of aiming it by feeling, but if you want to try to actually aim and hit something with it, it isn't really cooperative in doing that. 
it is more than powerful enough. In fact, you could use this thing against a Nexus Pro X and you'd feel like you're pretty much on even footing, which means it fits more into like a more compact primary option that's a little bit awkward to use. And the inconsistency with the scar barrel that came with the blaster, that wasn't great. Your mileage may vary on that one. It wasn't that it was inaccurate, it's that the performance would deviate between like 30 to 40 feet per second on some shots. And in terms of size, it's, it's not really that much different to be perfectly honest. Yeah, what a weird blaster. I have a pretty middling recommendation for it. It just seems more specialized than the Aeon Pro was. But this isn't its stock form, and much like the original Aeon Pro, this may have a brighter future when modded. But if you can spare the extra budget, I'm gonna highly recommend picking up the Nexus Pro X over the Aeon Pro X. This time around, it just seems to really lack its own kind of identity. But of course, that doesn't mean it's bad by any means. If you wanna test out high-performance foam flinging and don't wanna blow the budget, well, yeah, 25 bucks for Aeon Pro X? It's not a whole lot to ask for what you're getting. But now, my Nexus Pro X is complete.